Welcome back to Access All Areas here on AFL.com.au. Damien Barrett and I joined by the leading sports medico in the country, Dr Peter Larkins, is with us. Welcome to you, Doc. Thanks, Luke. That's a big call, but uh, happy to be here with you. It's accurate and informative, Doc, and we expect big things from you. It's an even 2012 uh, competition and your role may be the most crucial. Injuries are going to be a big factor and you've got a long list to get through today. Yeah, look, Darcy, this season has probably been uh, above average injury so far. Only six rounds in, so we have to wait and see the pattern. But there's been some big names go down, and uh, Adam Good's about the biggest uh, in Sydney at the present time. Let's start with him right now, Doc. Uh, well, this is the incident late in the game, Darcy, last quarter. You see, left hip, he pulls up very proppy, hopping. He grabs on the outside there, more like a hip flexor. He's having a scan at the moment in Sydney, so they haven't got a quite clear idea. I think it's going to be a soft tissue injury rather than anything in the joint, Darcy. But, uh, best and worst case scenario, Doc. Well, the, the worst case scenario is he's pinched a bit of cartilage in the hip and he just felt it on the surface. Four weeks. And that would be an arthroscope to clean that up and it would be four to six. Yep. Uh, best case scenario is he really just got a bit of a spasm in a, in a rectus muscle, the kicking muscle are on the side, and he might miss a week from that. Yep. So the MRI scan being done and Sydney will put out something uh, later today on that, I'm sure. So. Real ugly one from this weekend, amongst many ugly ones throughout the season, uh, was Nathan Bock. Yeah, we had broken legs. This is the right leg. He makes contact with DeBoer's uh, hip, you know, right on the bony crest there. And we'll see it as he comes in with uh, the back view. And just watch the... It's sort of about halfway up from the ankle towards the knee and it just snaps the big tibia bone. He's had a tibial rod put in, which is the standaway. Look, this is great medical care demo by the Gold Coast uh, staff there. You, you'll see him. Uh, he's being reassured. They put him on... You can see that uh, orange sleeve, which is an air splint, like the ambulances have, and from broken legs. That stabilises. And then he goes off and he's got the, the green inhaler in, which is, gives him pain relief as an anaesthetic. So, so he had a tibial rod, which is a big steel rod they put down the middle of the leg. He'll miss the rest of the season. And it's a long way back from breaking leg. You've been through a dance. We've had, we've had people like uh, Nathan Brown and, and Matt Maguire, Michael Barlow. So it's not a given that you come back that quickly. Doc, Stewie Cramery looked really nasty, but you've got some good news. And I believe he's trained, done some running drills today and got through yeah, okay. Yeah, look, Essendon were confident after the game this left knee injury wasn't going to be too severe. I mean, it could have been anything, Dash. You watch the left knee get trapped under, under the big sword. Um, shin there and he twisted the medial there's no doubt but he had a stable knee at the end of the game they're pretty switched on the medical staff at Eston they were sure it was stable it's a question of how sore he was and how swollen he was walking around on it today so Cramery's a reasonable chance they've got a big game against West Coast on Saturday so Cramery's probably going to be uh, he'll be touch and go but I reckon he's probably going to get up Doc Big said Tanta Halpin playing his first game for GWS against Carlton. Uh, the talk out of that game was he done his knee pretty seriously. Yeah, look, they're, they're thinking this is an ACL injury. The mechanism, as we look at it again as he lands, he certainly buckles the knee inwards, which is the medial ligament gets involved. And you see it sort of buckle inwards. And there's a little suggestion that it just has that corkscrew twisting movement. After the game, Sheedy had reported that the doctors felt that was an ACL. He, again, he's having a scan this afternoon, so it's not confirmed. But if they think it's an ACL, the doctors, they're usually pretty right. So they don't give that out if they want to hide it. So if that's an ACL, that'll be season over for Satan, which is a shame because he was obviously a big part of the of this experience that they needed up there. Dean Brogan finds himself with the Giants now, Doc. He's tried to punch someone in the head again. Surprise, yeah. surprise. That's, <laughs> he does, that's he does, been his go right, for a while. Just watch the right wrist. He actually gets wedged between uh, Lockie Henderson and, and, and Heath Scotland there. And you see the wrist actually gets bent back. So that's the radius bone and he was really in a lot of pain. They strapped up and tried to get him back on the ground, but he's having x-rays done and I think there's probably going to be a little crack in there for Brogan. So it depends on whether or not they need to put a little plate on that. He might miss quite a few weeks, up to six weeks with that if it's a break. Stephen Hill from the uh, Dockers. He's been a great dasher, hasn't he? The left foot uh, uh, star. This is a collision with David Swallow and he gets caught. You see him in the, in the foreground there. You'll see it, it comes in again where he, he actually gets kneed right just above his own knee in the front, in the thigh, but in the thigh. So what are they saying, Doc? Just... They're saying it's a cork. Cool, okay. You know, he's walking on it and uh, look, it'll bleed and, the, and they put a lot of ice, they put a compression sleeve on him, but if he swells up, like some corks, about 50-50 corks miss. So, and being his kicking leg and his running leg, he won't be able to do anything in the early part of the week. Yeah. This next incident, um, David Swallow, it's another slide... Uh, so we just go to Adam Selwood first, actually, just before we go to David Swallow. Just take us through yeah, what's happened. He's this handy, is Doc. left hand. You'll see another inch where it actually gets jagged into the ground. And, and, and uh, look, he had to come off after this. Uh, and what's the left hand? It just comes forward and gets pinched into the ground. And actually, I think what happens here is the bone gets pushed through the skin. He said he's got split webbing. He's had mm. stitches. But you see the pain he's in. Mm, cool. So I think that's, a, that's a, actually more like a compound dislocation. They say he hasn't broken anything, so they've stitched it up. If it doesn't get infected... I mean, believe it or not, he's an outside chance yeah. to play Selwood this week. Unbelievable. Damo jumped the gun. I uh, did. That's a rundown, Damo. We normally <laughs> go in order. David Swallow, uh, a slide tackle dot, but in the news, we're slide tackle. Yeah, yeah, look, it is. We can see this is his left ankle. Watch it go off to the side, and you'll see it just gets... It's just as, as the... He gets pushed into that sort of normal sprain position. you see the ankle then get pushed across. So he certainly was very limited after this. Uh, I mean, he got sore ligaments on the outside. Again, you just see it again. See the contact that's made with his lower shin. 
Uh, luckily, nothing like the Gary Rowan where he broke his tibia. But gee, that's that's just again an inch away from more. That's how we get, we get trends in the game, Damo. Yeah. And I hadn't heard of a slide tackle apart mm. from slo soccer, soccer until this year. Which they banned it, of course, because of the broken legs. Absolutely. That occurred if you put your boots up in soccer, they rub mm. you out for half a year. Yeah. I mean, you talk that's about... a stereotypical slide that the AFL doesn't want. I well, because we've seen what happened with Gary Rowan, a shocking broken leg. And I, I think you'll find that that'll be looked at as part of the review of the season because that often happens when the medical reports come in and they they as, get medical information. As to whether it's dangerous, and it'll be, they'll be told it's dangerous. It's not a coincidence, Doc. Players are adapting to the way the game's played. They don't want to go in and get caught holding the ball. Yep. They're sliding in feet first. That gives them an exit to handball out. Yep. Might ask Lindsay Gilby about that uh, very shortly. He's going to be our special guest. Uh, David Armitage, another one. Yeah, David Armitage gets really cleaned up. You see that Hodgie just goes for the contest, but he gets a knee right in the back. And look, he was really struggling to walk after this start. So obviously a cork back. I just make the point that you can actually break the little wings on the vertebrae, the transverse process. Colin Sylvia missed six weeks for Melbourne early this season in an NAB game when that happened to him. So Armitage was very sore after the game. And whilst it is a cork back, and you might think, I'll oh, play with a cork back, they're going to have a look at him early in the, later in the week and see whether he can get up. Well, take us through. It's been a comprehensive uh, report, Doc. Uh, your uh, review of uh, round well, good six. Good scan. The results will come out this afternoon. Uh, Sam Fisher did a hamstring for playing for the Saints. He had to go down at, uh, at half time and didn't get back on the ground. He'll be a three or four weeker. Stephen Hill, we've talked about. Cramery, I think, look, they're going to scan him if he's sore tomorrow, but at the moment he's walking around. Nathan Bock, we're not going to see the rest of the season. He's a big loss. Uh, Obviously, the Gold Coast. Brogan, uh, the X ray will determine whether he gets up. A help and will probably find that it turns out to be more severe than that. Easton Wood uh, from the Dogs was playing so well, and he's going to be a loss. He'll be a three weeker probably out of there. Ben Johnson's having some trouble with subluxing his shoulder, Dars. And look, Collingwood have to make a decision whether they continue to play him. He happened a couple of times on the weekend. Adam Solwood, as I think, I think with the stitches, if he doesn't get infected, he's probably right to play. Out of those, Doc, who's the chance to play in round seven? Oh, we've got a few. Look, Aaron Sanderland's uh, coming up, uh, probably coming back from a calf injury. He's missed two matches. Is Dars, and I think probably that they'll play him. Chris Yaron, I'm sure, will play. He's missed two with his toe. Dale Thomas has missed three with the hamstring, and I reckon he'll get up to play. Darren Jolly's got a knee and a groin combination. Still pretty sore, so I wouldn't be surprised if he has one more off. Jobs Gibson will get back with his ankle injury. Risk Catelli, they need him back, of course, so with those big injuries that they've had up at uh, the Gold Coast, I'm sure he'll play. Joel Selwood had a week off from the concussion we saw last week with the Reigns incident, but he'll be up to play for Geelong. Jay Schultz had a scratch cornea, the membrane on the eye. He's got to see a specialist on Wednesday and get up to play if he's given the Clearance. A couple of big names. Eagles to start with, Doc. Nick Nat Nui missed yesterday's game against North Melbourne. That talk was he'd only missed that game only. What's your mail on him? Well, look, they've actually said he's got a mild strain, Dame. I've never of known what? a player of a hamstring. So I've never known a player just to miss one with a mild strain of a hamstring. So, it's so being two, honest, maybe three? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, if that's a strain of the hamstring, they're not going to want to rip that hamstring and make it an eight weeker. So I'd be surprised if he plays, if they're being honest. And they've said he's got a yeah. strain. It's not just a bit tight. So Josh, Josh Kennedy, another Eagle, who, yeah, look, as we know, has got a really bad leg. Yeah, look, we thought the sprained ankle was going to cost him two or three weeks. It's going to be 10 to 12 weeks. He'd already missed time with plantar fascia tear and now he's had surgery. So Kennedy's going to be a 10 to 12 weeker now. Gary Ablett? Gary Ablett, look, he's only missed two games to us and I think if we remember that injury on his right knee, was the bruising inside the knee, it was always going to be a two or three matcher. So there's no, people saying, oh, Ablett's taking longer than expected. But I, I, look, they've got uh, GWS. No chance at all, GWS, this week for him? I, I, I think if I was Gold Coast, I'd be keeping Ablett out another week for sure. And one final one, Robbie Warnock was uh, an inclusion and then yeah. hurt himself in training. Where's he? Well, it's easy Carlton because they were saying they were resting players. They were going to rest Cruiser, they were going to rest Jard. And then uh, Warnock uh, came up with a little nick in the hamstring, they called again. A bit like Nat Nui. So I think if it's truly that he's got a, a sore hamstring, Warnock will be uh, missing more than this week that he's just missed. Doc, uh, great to have you. We're going to Thanks speak to us. you each and every Monday. And I know you've got pages and pages there of history. Might give you a bit of homework for next Wouldn't week. It? This is the trend. Have we seen more up to around six? I'll, I'll give you some figures for next week, see where we are. Dr does. Peter Larkins is going to join us each and every Monday on Access or Areas. A special guest next, Lindsay Gilby, another injured player and a star of the Western Bulldogs, to join us on afl.com.au. That's next.